In this question, we have to simplify. Okay, so let's talk about the square root. So let me give you guys some examples. If you have like the square root of 25 x 10, look at the 25 first. What is the square root of 25? Well, if you don't know, you can just type it on your calculator. It's five. Then what are we gonna do with this? Well, here's where exponent rules come into it. We should know that if this, ex you've got that number there, right? And then sometimes there'll also be a number over here, like a three or a five or a four, whatever. But if there is no number there, then it's because it's automatically taken as a two, but we just don't write it there. Okay, so remember the exponent rule tells us that you're gonna take that 10 and that two, and you're always gonna take the inside number, okay? So it's gonna be x and then it's the inside number divided by the outside number. Now, what is 10 divided by two? Well, that's five, so that just becomes five, okay? Let me give you another example quickly. So let's say you have like 81x6y4. Maybe you wanna pause the video and you can try this one yourself. But, so, well, we know the square root of 81 is nine. Kevin, why don't we divide this one by two as well? Guys, this is not an exponent. That is just a normal number. And then for this exponent, you're gonna divide it by whatever number's there. So that will be um, six divided by two, which is three. And then for the four divided by two, that would be two, like that. Now we can go tackle this one. Maybe you wanna try that one yourself quickly. But what you would get, um, so the square root of 169, don't worry, I don't expect you to know that. I sometimes even forget that one. Just use your calculator. So just say square root of 169, and that is 13. Okay, fantastic. Then you take this exponent, and remember, if there's no number here, then it's a two. So you say um, six divided by two, which is three. So you say x to the power of three. Now this one is super nice. Why? Because it's a zero. And we should remember that if you have anything to the power of zero, the answer is just one. So if you have like a to the zero, it's one. If you have a million to the zero, it's one. So this whole thing to the power of zero is just one. So nice and easy. So we can actually just ignore that. Well, you can put a one if you want, but it doesn't really do anything. Now at the bottom, we've got this 12 and we've got this three. You guys know what to do now. You take the inside number and you divide it by the outside number, which is, so you don't have to show that step. I don't know why I'm doing that. 12 divided by three is four. Okay, now we have um, to, okay, I'm gonna ignore that one because that one doesn't really do anything. So this is what we have at the moment. Now we have x and x, so we need to think about exponents. So remember, if you have like a to the eight, now there's different ways of doing this. Some of you are probably quite good at this and you can get the answer immediately, but I'm gonna do it more of a, a slow and stepwise approach for the learners who still struggle, just like I did when I was in grade nine. So um, if you have a eight over a five, we know, oh, that's not a nice five, Kevin, come on. So what you do is we know that you minus, you always say the top one minus the bottom one. So that would be eight minus five, which is three. So let's do the same over here. Maybe you wanna do it a different way, but I'm just gonna use the normal method. So we take the top number minus the bottom number, which is a minus one. Ah, now remember, you are not allowed to leave your answer with a negative exponent. So what do we do? Well, remember, to get rid of this negative, you just need to move this, okay? So for example, if you have a minus two, then or let's say we have like, sorry, b, a minus three, then this a minus three is negative. So then what you do is you keep the b where it is, but then you put the a three at the bottom, or maybe you sometimes end up with e f to the two times h over b minus two times, oh, not another f, uh, times y. Then if you look at this one, it's negative. So what do we do? Well, if it's negative there, then to get rid of the negative, you take it to the top. So to get rid of the negative, you just take it to the other place. So if it was at the top, you put it at the bottom. If it was at the bottom, you put it at the top. So this x minus one, we're gonna take it to the bottom. So we're gonna keep the 13 where it is, but we're gonna put the x at the bottom. So you end up with 13 over x as the final answer.